Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Free Access Day on fxstreet.com and welcome to this webinar brought to you by fxstreet.com. My name is James Chen and I am the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about, uh, this is my regular monthly webinar on FX Street and uh, today what I'm going to be talking about is something that I uh, didn't get to uh, finish last time I was talking on FX Street. Uh, I was talking about swing and range trading and I'm going to present to you um, a uh, strategy that I use as well as uh, take a look at the charts and see really how it plays out on the charts. And also uh, towards the end, if uh, I have time, I will uh, also uh, give you exactly what I'm looking at on all of the major currency pairs as well as uh, the metals and other instruments that I'm looking at uh, if there is time at the end. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, take a look at those from a technical perspective. So um, let's get started real quick. Now, I'm, I'm very glad to see all of you. Uh, I only do uh, one webinar on uh, FX Street now uh, for the past uh, many months because I've been extremely busy. And uh, by the way, I will be traveling throughout Asia for the next uh, two months. So next time I am on FX Street, it will probably be uh, from somewhere in Southeast Asia or China. So uh, lots of travel. Uh, going on here. So very, very busy, but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to doing more collaboration with FX Street, and uh, they've really been great. So let's get started, uh, get started here real quick, and um, talking about uh, swing and range trading as well as uh, looking at what I'm looking at on the charts at the current moment. Okay, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Uh, Forex trading is a high-risk activity, as all of you or many of you uh, may know and should know. Give me a few seconds to look through that, and we'll move on real quick. Okay, so uh, once again, this is my monthly uh, webinar called Finding High Probability Trading Setups, and this uh, the topic of this month's webinar will be swing and range trading. We've seen lots of uh, ranges occur, and this is, when I talk about ranges, I'm talking not only about uh, just horizontal ranges, but also angled ranges in terms of, uh, you know, uh, trending ranges, et cetera. So we've been seeing lots of that going on. Uh, in the uh, in the markets, in the uh, especially in the currency markets uh, as of late, and I want to talk about how I approach uh, swing and range trading from a technical perspective, and show you. Uh, and then I'm going to go on to uh, show you a strategy uh, that I uh, happen to use um, that uh, takes advantage of uh, range trading markets. So uh, that's what I'm, I'm going to be talking about today. Now, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me. And uh, there are many people uh, here that are uh, probably that uh, uh, have not attended any of my webinars before. Uh, my name again is James Chen. I'm the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. I've only been here for about a month and a half prior to that. Uh, prior to this, I was at another firm called FX Solutions, and I was there for, for around five years doing the same, uh, you know, similar uh, work. Uh, I've been an active Forex trader uh, since the inception of Retail Forex. Uh, really since around 2000, 2001, using primarily technical analysis. Uh, prior to that, I was trading equities and futures. So I've been trading for, uh, from a technical perspective for a very, very long time. Now, I'm also a chartered market technician or a CMT, which is a designation for uh, market analysts, for technical market analysts. I'm also a commodity trading advisor or a CTA registered here in the U.S. with the National Futures Association. I publish daily and intraday forex technical analysis. Now, I had a question here from Terry uh, regarding, you know, where can you find uh, what, uh, you know, my work now that I've moved to FXDD. Uh, now, you can find it on our website at um, 4x.fxdd.com, uh, which is uh, essentially our blog here at FXDD. Also, of course, as always, you can find, uh, uh, you know, my work, my analysis, my webinars, et cetera, at uh, fxstreet.com, and I've been working with FX Street for a very, very long time. Uh, also, on uh, the new... Um, social media site, forexstreet.net, uh, which is really a great site uh, that uh, was started by fxstreet.com. And uh, take a look at that. Uh, very good site, and uh, I'm putting analysis there on a daily basis as well. Uh, also, I've authored numerous articles in the, the, the uh, publications that you see here now. Just as a point of note, uh, SFO Magazine last month carried an article uh, on a strategy, the, the strategy essentially that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, which is a, a range type of uh, trading strategy. And th there was an article on that last month in SFO Magazine, if you want to take a look at uh, the back article on that. But uh, essentially, I'm going to give you uh, everything that I talked about in that 
uh, article plus show you, uh, you know, exactly how I use it on the charts. Now, I'm also quoted on a regular basis by uh, Reuters News, Dow Jones, Associated Press, International Herald Tribune, and I am the author of two books, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading and Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets, both of which were published by John Wiley and Sons in the past several years. Uh, also, um, I am the author speaker for the FX Street DVD set, High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market. Uh, so that's a really good uh, start or an introduction into uh, really taking the trend following approach, which is essentially what I do uh, in the Forex market. Now, you may think, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm essentially a trend follower, and why am I talking about swing and range trading right now? Well, you know, uh, they, there is really no conflict there. Uh, when there is a trend, I'm looking to follow the trend, whether uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, there's several types of ranges, whether it's a, a horizontal range or, uh, you know, an angled range to the upside or an angled range to the downside. If there is a trend, I am following that trend. If there is no trend, I will often look for opportunities to, uh, uh, to play, uh, uh, you know, uh, play price action between support and resistance. So I'll show you exactly how I do that in a second. Okay. Uh, so that's enough about me. Now, uh, just to give you a quick background on uh, range trading, uh, you know, uh, the emphasis here is on, and before I, you know, after I uh, talk, uh, give you this quick background, I will show you the uh, strategy I'm talking about. But just, just to give you a, an overview here, in case any of you are new to this, um, you know, uh, very quickly about range trading, the emphasis here is on trading swings or turns in the market, obviously. What you're looking to do uh, in a range trading or a swing trading type of uh, environment uh, is that you're looking to trade, uh, you know, very simply, long uh, long near support, short near uh, near resistance. And uh, that's essentially what you're trying to do. Now, uh, with uh, this range trading uh, approach, setting the all-important thing here is risk and money management. And setting risk and money, money management is relatively straightforward when you're trading from a range trading perspective. Now, when, uh, once again, when I talk about range trading, I'm, I can also mean in a trending environment. So a trending environment, and I'll show you this on my charts in a second, a trending environment can also be looked at as a range trading environment as well. I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute. Um, so it's a very active form of trading as there really there are always tra range trading opportunities in the currency markets. Now, uh, ranges, as we see time and again, occur very frequently in the forex market and once again, as I'm talking about, uh, you know, not only horizontal ranges, which are just flat ranges, sideways price action, but also angled ranges in the form of, you know, you've heard of parallel trend channels, uh, parallel uptrend channels, parallel up, uh, downtrend channels. Those are also considered range trading opportunities, uh, although there is a bias there. In, in those, in angled ranges, there is a bias, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Now, um, you know, this type of trading can be used effectively on any currency pair, whether they're the majors, uh, you know, majors being uh, euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, uh, semi, what I call semi-majors, but really they're sort of majors too, uh, Aussie dollar, uh, dollar Canada, uh, or the crosses, uh, for example, euro pound, euro yen, you know, um, what else is there, euro Swiss, uh, et cetera, uh, pound yen, et cetera, and or exotics, although I, I tend to stick to the more uh, the more liquid pairs because I'm looking for, first of all, tighter spreads, second of all, more liquidity uh, in those types of markets. Uh, time frames are flexible. Uh, you might ask, uh, you know, how are you trading this? Are you trading on a five-minute chart? Are you trading on a, a daily chart? Are you trading on a weekly chart? Well, you know, time frames are very flexible, although I tend to stay away from very short-term uh, time frames, including the five minutes, uh, five-minute charts, the 15-minute charts, etc. I tend to uh, to stay towards the higher time frame charts. If any of you have heard me talk or or uh, seen my analysis before, you know that I tend to stick with the daily chart, uh, sometimes the four-hour chart, hour chart. But uh, anything uh, below that, I tend to stay away from. From a from a um, range trading perspective, when I'm looking at a very short-term time frame, uh, more often than not, I'm looking for breakout opportunities as opposed to range trading type of opportunities. So. Um, so the time frames are flexible, though I stay away. I tend to stay away from the, the long, the shorter term time frames. I also tend to stay away from the very long term time frames as well. Okay, swing, uh, swing and range trading criteria. First of all, we're looking for support and resistance levels. Okay, hopefully you can all see my screen. 
KO says blank screen here. Um, if you cannot see my screen, please please uh, let me know. Okay, so uh, swing and range trading criteria. What what are the criteria? Uh, that great. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, it's good here. Um, okay, swing and range trading criteria. What are they? Uh, first of all. First and foremost, I'm looking for support and resistance levels. Whether they're in a horizontal range or an angled range, as in an uptrend or downtrend, I'm looking for support and resistance levels. Now, in a horizontal range, I'm looking for both support and resistance. In an uptrending range, I'm primarily biased to the upside because I am a trend follower. So uh, I'm looking more for support. In a downtrending range, I'm looking more for resistance, okay? to go short of resistance. So there is a bias there in the in the uh, angled ranges. Now, um, oftentimes, what I'm looking for to trigger myself to get into a trade is uh, our intra-range trend lines. I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, in a second. But intra-range trend lines are simply trend lines that occur within a range, okay? Um, so uh, I'll show you the, the, the uh, visual depiction in a second. Also, what I'm looking for are bar and candle patterns. And, and if any of you have heard me speak before, you know that I, uh, you know, rely on, on as confirmation only several candlestick patterns, including, for example, the, uh, the hammer candle at lows and, uh, you know, hammer candle at lows and shooting stars at highs. Okay. Those are, are very strong candle patterns, uh, for me to confirm or warn of potential turns near support or resistance. Okay, so barn candle patterns are very, very important, especially those, okay? Also, we have uh, divergences. When I talk about divergences, I'm talking about uh, price oscillator divergences, which I'll show you in a second. I'll show you some examples of my charts as well. When these come together, essentially, you know, if you've ever heard me speak before, you know that I talk a lot about confluence. Confluences are coming together of different uh, types of uh, technical factors that come to support or give rationale to a trade. So when I'm looking for... So when I see support, for example, and I'm looking for a turn near support, not only am I looking for a turn north near support, but I'm looking for confirmation of that turn. So that confirmation can take uh, can be in the form of uh, a candlestick pattern, for example, a hammer near support. It could also be a divergence signal, okay, a bullish divergence signal, which means uh, you know, for for example, uh, price action is showing a lower low, but the oscillator is showing a higher low. And therefore, that's another uh, a factor in my confluence. And then uh, also, for example, maybe there's a 100 period a simple moving average or a 200 period simple moving average that occurs right there. Those all come together to create what I call confluence or what many people call, call confluence. And therefore, I'm looking for some type of uh, event or turn to take place at that, at that area. Okay. Uh, so also, we talk about oscillator. Oscillator, not only can they be used in divergences, but they can also be used to, and, you know, again, if you've ever heard me speak before, you'll know I talk about oscillators a lot uh, in terms of confirmations only, which means that, uh, for example, on the stochastics, if you're looking for a turn near support, a comp one of the confirmation, uh, confluence confirmations of that uh, turn is, um, for example, the slow stochastics moving up or crossing up above oversold. If it's already an oversold and it crosses above the oversold line, which in the case of stochastics is around the 20 area, the 20 line, if it moves up above there, then that for me is yet another confirmation that perhaps this turn is actually taking place. And if this turn is taking place, then uh, I'm looking for other factors to confirm that turn. If, if uh, everything's telling me, yes, this, confirm, this, uh, this turn is in fact taking place and there is momentum to the upside off of this turn, then that looks to me like a high probability trade. Okay. Uh, also, we use mo uh, Bollinger Bands and moving averages to also help confirm uh, these types of uh, uh, turns in, uh, in ranges, within ranges. Okay. So, uh, once again, you know, what I was talking, I'm just going to go through these uh, one by one just to show you visual depictions. Support and resistance levels, uh, you know, this is a very simple depiction. Uh, this is a flat or a sideways or horizontal um, range. But, uh, you know, there are also angled ranges, which I'll show you on the charts in a minute. Uh, now, intra-range trend lines. And these are the criteria I'm talking about. Intra-range trend lines. What is an intra-range trend line? Okay, this is a flat range that you see right here on your um, on the PowerPoint. Now, within this range, there are, you could draw trend lines. Now, I'm looking to get in on these trend lines within these ranges. Now, as you can tell here with this uh, illustration, 
when you get into these types of uh, trades, when you're triggered off of breaks of these intra-range trend lines, it'll get you later. It, it will get you into the um, into the trade more often than not later than if you pick that that bottom right there and you got in at the bottom. Yes, absolutely. However, the reason I use these as triggers is that for me they they create higher probability opportunities. That in fact, not only did that turn take place near support but also momentum seems to be moving in the direction of that turn, which in this case is to the upside, okay? So I want confirmation. I'm looking for confirmation. Just the fact that price action reaches support does not mean anything to me because there could be a breakdown of that support. There could be a breakdown of that range, and therefore I'm not going to take a, a, a trade just because of the fact that price action reached support, okay? I'm going to need confirmation on one of two events. If there's a breakdown below support, okay, that's a breakout play, I'm going to want confirmation of that breakout or that breakdown. If there's a turn uh, and uh, uh, support is respected, I want confirmation of that turn as well. And this is one confirmation. This is actually my trigger to get into a trade, is the intra-range trend lines, as you can see here. Okay. So uh, I'm trading breaks. So... I, I often say this, you know, when I'm trading breaks, whether I'm trading breaks or I'm trading turns, I'm really trading breaks, okay? So uh, if that makes sense to you. If I'm looking to trade breakouts or if I'm looking to trade turns in the market, I'm still always looking to trade breakouts, okay? Why? Because obviously if there's a breakdown of support, I'm looking to trade that breakout you know, with confirmation. If there's a turn, I'm also looking to trade a breakout in this case of this intra-range trend line. So breakouts are very, very important to me, okay, and preferably confirmed by other uh, technical factors. Okay, bar and candle patterns. Now, uh, you know, these are uh, other uh, ways that we could, um, we could confirm a turn is taking place within a range. I talk about this a lot, single bar candle patterns. Uh, some of you may have heard of Pinocchio bars. Uh, I'm sorry, Pinocchio bars or pin bars. Um, or, uh, you know, in the candlestick world, they're called hammers or shooting stars. Hammers occur at lows. Shooting, star, shooting stars occurs, uh, occur at highs. So if you take a look at this illustration right here, okay, a hammer is a simply, after a move down, price action creates this little pattern, this single ca uh, candle pattern right here. Okay, and what is this pattern? What is this pattern? But uh, it is simply represents price rejection or price failure near the lows. So uh, we have this downtrend here on the hammer, okay? A downtrend on the hammer, price action tries to move down, but it gets rejected near the lows, and if this uh, low is near support, then all the better. So it tries to move down, it gets rejected, it fails near the lows, moves back up, closes near the highs. Okay, that's telling us that price action tried to move lower, but it got rejected, and it closed near the highs. And that's, uh, that's one confirmation or warning that there's a turn, especially if this occurs near support uh, within a range trading situation, okay? Shooting star, just the opposite. We have uh, an up run or an uptrend. We got a bunch of white candles here, and uh, white or green candles, whatever your platform uses. But then uh, we've got the shooting star candle, which is simply price action tried to continue this uptrend, but it could not. So it moved back down, and, um, and it, uh, it closed near the lows, which means that it's losing upside momentum. It gets rejected near the highs, and perhaps there might be a turn there, especially if this occurs near resistance. Why do they call it pin bars? Because I think it comes to, uh, from uh, Pinocchio bars. Why do they call it Pinocchio bars? Because, uh, you know, uh, you, the story of Pinocchio with the long nose, uh, this, uh, this is telling, basically telling you a lie, okay? Pinocchio is no, known for lying, and whenever, whenever he lied, the, the nose would grow. So uh, here it's telling you a lie. It's trying to go up. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, moving to the downside. So uh, I, the, the signal there is that it's moving to the downside. And combined with other factors, this is a good potential signal that a range trading situation might be taking place. Okay, also, uh, we have uh, multi-bar patterns like engulfing patterns, double test failures, double triple tops and bottoms. Those can also talk about turns within a range, okay? But primarily, and the strategy that I'm going to show you in a second, we'll be talking about the, uh, the candlestick pattern that uh, I just mentioned, the hammer shooting stars or the pin bars. Also, uh, I, and I, sh I probably shouldn't have included this here, the price oscillator divergences. Um, you know, I tend to use stochastics. 
Uh, you could use RSI, MACD, whatever you want to use, but uh, I tend to use stochastics. And, as, you know, simply what I'm saying, and I've done many, many webinars on divergences before, and I, I don't really have time to go through all that today, but just very simply, uh, what what is a divergence? It's just another signal that's telling you perhaps there's a turn in the market. And when I'm talking about divergences right now, I'm talking about um, regular divergence, not hidden divergence. Regular divergence is what most people uh, talk about when when they uh, when they think of divergences. Okay, so simply what it means is if you have a higher high in price, a lower high in the oscillator, that's talking about a loss of upside momentum and a possible turn to the downside. Okay, by the same token, if you have a lower low in price and a higher low in the oscillator. That talks about loss of downside momentum and a possible turn up in price, okay? So uh, once again, price oscillator divergences can be a useful confirmation tool that there might be a turn in the market. Okay, another way oscillators can be used, and this is uh, yet another uh, confirmation here, and I'll show you, this all comes together, rest assured, this all comes together in my uh, strategy that I'm going to show you in a minute, but the oscillator comes comes into play where you're looking for, a, just like I mentioned before, a cross above oversold or a cross below overbought, okay? And this will confirm a turn in the market in a range trading situation, okay? So what I use, uh, as, uh, once again, is stochastics. Um, alternatives are relative strength index, ROC, which is rate of change, CCI, commodity channel index, Williams percent R, which is basically fast stochastics, and what I'm looking for, once again, is I'm waiting for an impending emergence from overbought or oversold. When the oscillator is in the middle between overbought and oversold, it doesn't mean anything to me, and I completely disregard it, unless I'm looking for divergences, okay? But essentially speaking, it doesn't mean anything to me. Now, when, uh, pr when uh, the oscillator is in overbought territory, I'm looking for a possible turn down below overbought. When it's an oversold territory, I'm looking for a possible turn up from oversold. So, uh, you know, uh, this may be different from the way a lot of other people look at oscillators. Some people look at oscillators like, uh, you know, if, uh, if the oscillator goes, uh, is moving into overbought, that's the time to sell. I say absolutely not. Uh, in a trending situation, you will have uh, an oscillator moving into oversold and, and uh, working in oversold for quite some time. Same thing, to, uh, uh, you know, same thing uh, to the upside and to the downside. If it, if it moves into overbought, it's time to sell. I don't think so. If it's moving to oversold, it's time to buy. I don't think so. Um, once again, I'm, I'm sort of doing the opposite. When it's emerging from overbought, oversold, that for me is a possible signal. Bollinger Bands, I'm not going to talk much about them today, uh, but uh, essentially these can be useful as turn indicators during ranges uh, to help you with the, uh, you know, with the, um, uh, uh, support and resistance within a range trading situation. Okay, uh, exits real quick before I get to the strategy. Uh, exits, um, you know, stop losses in a range trading situation, stop losses can be determined by price action, and it's very straightforward. Okay, uh, you're waiting for the market to tell you that you're wrong. So if you're going long near support, you're basically waiting for the market to tell you you're wrong before you get out, before you get out with a loss. So where is that? That's simply below support, okay? Now, uh, you know, what I often say is a stop, a stop loss below, uh, uh, below, the last, below the last swing low or above the last swing high, depending on whether you're going long or short. Uh, and then, of course, you've got to consider your reward to risk ratio, but in a range trading situation, oftentimes your reward to risk ratio is uh, relatively good because uh, you, you have, a, you know, a, a set place to place your stop loss and you have a, uh, Hopefully, your reward is uh, the other side of the range, which is, uh, you know, usually much larger than where your stop loss is. Okay, and oftentimes, uh, when you're uh, trying to get in, uh, you know, get out uh, or manage your trade when the trade is going on, you could set your stop loss to break even, and then uh, from there, you could also, uh, you know, move your stop loss uh, or trail your stop loss manually to help lock in gains, Okay. Alternatively, you can also identify support resistance levels for profit targets. When you're talking about a range trading situation, the other side of the range is obviously, you know, one of the key profit targets or the ultimate profit target, okay? You can also let the oscillator give you the exit signal if it goes to the other side of overbought or resolved, then that can also be a possible exit signal. 
um, et cetera. Okay, so let me get to the uh, strategy. Okay, and the strategy I want to talk about here, and I started talking about this last month uh, on this FX Street uh, webinar, but I really didn't get through uh, to it much. And uh, let me just explain it real quick, and then I'm going to show you my charts and see, uh, tell you exactly how it works. Okay, so we're looking for uh, this is a range trading situation. We're looking for a backdrop, a warning, and a trigger. What do I mean by that? Once again, backdrop, warning, trigger. What is the backdrop? The backdrop is simply uh, a channel, any type of channel, whether it's a horizontal channel, an angle channel, or what have you. In this case, as we can see with this illustration, we have uh, you know a trending channel. Okay, so this is a backdrop for me. Now, in this type of uh, a channel. Uh, I am looking to be biased to the upside, as I mentioned. In a horizontal channel, as you can see with this bullet point here, in a horizontal channel, you look for turns to the downside near the top of the channel, okay, or turns to the upside near the bottom of the channel. So turn up near support or turn down near resistance. Now, in an uptrend channel, as we see on this illustration right here, or this chart right here, I'm biased to the upside. So I will only be taking long trades near the bottom, okay, because this is very obviously an uptrend. Okay, and uh, so I'm looking for turns near the bottom of the channel, which is a turn near support. In a downtrend channel, by the same token, I'm looking for turns to the downside near the top of the channel or turns to the downside near resistance, okay? And I'm not necessarily looking for a turn to the upside near support, if that makes sense, okay? So once again, the backdrop is any type of a channel, okay? A channel has support, has resistance, and we're looking for at least Two, uh, you know, two or more turns near uh, support or resistance. Okay, at that point you have you have a, a channel. Now, in a horizontal channel, there is no bias. I will be looking to uh, go long near uh, near support near the bottom, short near the top near resistance. In an uptrend channel, I'm looking only to go long near support because I'm looking uh, to uh, uh, to play the trend. In a downtrend channel I'm only looking to go short near resistance because I'm looking to play play the um, downtrend okay so that's the backdrop that's number one number two you're looking for one of three warnings and and I'm not saying here that you need to have all three warnings if you're looking for one of three warnings uh, to tell you that perhaps this is uh, you know this is the right trade to make number one a reversal candle pattern what I talked about before was this uh, hammer candle right here if you could take a look it's a little bit small here but if you could take a look, this is a very, very nice hammer candle, okay? We got a nice down run. We got this hammer candle with a small upper body, long lower wick. It was rejected right near this uptrend support line. This is support. Right near support, it was rejected. Right at support in this case, it was rejected, okay? So at that point, that's one warning. Uh, perhaps there's going to be a turn in the market, okay? Number two, price oscillator divergence, what I talked about before. If there's a higher high in price and a lower high in the oscillator, that's talking about a possible turn to the downside near resistance. If there's a lower low in price but a higher low in the oscillator, that's talking about a possible turn to the upside near support. Okay, so that's uh, uh, one. Uh, that's the second of these uh, three warnings. The third warning is an oscillator cross above overbought. I'm sorry, above oversold, or an oscillator cross below overbought. Okay, and that's the third warning. You're looking for one of these three warnings. Now, once one of these three warnings occurs within your backdrop, which again is your channel, then you take a look at the trigger. What is the trigger? It's how you get into the trade. Most often, how I get into a trade, the trigger I use is through a simple breakout play. And typically, within the context of a range, whether it's an uptrending range, a downtrending range, or a sideways range, I'm looking for a breakout of an intra-channel trend line, and I just talked about that before, okay? An intra-channel trend line, a trend line that occurs within a channel. Now, in a sideways channel, in a horizontal channel, you can have uh, intra-trend, I'm sorry, intra-range uh, intra range trend lines, I'm sorry about that, intra-range trend lines that go either up or down. Now, in an uptrend channel, as we can see on this uh, illustration here, the uh, the intra-range trend line will be going down. It's going to be resistance. It's a counter trend line. In a downtrending channel, the intra-range trend line is going up. It's a counter trend line.
going to the upside. It's uh, it acts as support. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so um, once again, the trigger is a simple breakout play, and most often what I use is an intra-channel trend line. I'll show you this right now in the charts. Okay, but before that, putting this all together, this methodology, methodology for ra uh, range and swing training puts in place several criteria for setting up a high probability trading opportunity. Why does it do that? How does it do that? At any point in the game, if you do not have a backdrop, if you do not have a warning, if you do not have a trigger, at any point in the game, you're telling yourself, you know what, this is not the trade to be in. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to get into this trade. So that, arguably, and from my perspective, that is a very, very good thing. Okay? The fact that at any point in this process, it's telling you that uh, you should not be taking this trade. And so it saves you from, from taking this trade. But if all of this lines up and you get into a trade, then that, from, me, from my perspective and from my experience, is a relatively high probability trade. Of course, if you also have a, a you know, risk management in place, it's a, it's a high probability trade that uh, you know, I would have confidence in, in being in that trade. Okay? So once again, requiring a backdrop, a warning, and a trigger in place before entering into a trade increases the potential for success uh, you know, from my perspective, in range and swing trade. Okay, let's get to the charts real quick. You'll notice I'm using uh, MetaTrader charts. Let me go ahead and... Uh... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. We just had one question here. Uh, swer swerved a plumber? Uh, you had a question. Can you name the three warnings again? Let me, let me just do that real quick. The three warnings are, number one, a reversal candle candlestick pattern. Okay, like a hammer or a shooting star or a pin bar. Number two, price oscillator divergence. Number three, an oscillator cross of overbought or oversold. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And also this is going to be recorded. So uh, you could take a look at this, uh, I guess, uh, tomorrow or so uh, on my web page on fxstreet.com. Okay, let me uh, show you my charts real quick. Okay, as you can see here, this is a euro dollar chart, and I just uh, just to illustrate the point here, I'm just showing you some uh, uh, you know some uh, historical charts, and then I'm going to hopefully get to my uh, my uh, you know my uh, more recent charts just to show you what I'm looking at um, from a technical perspective. Okay, so this is the backdrop. This is number one. You got a backdrop, so you've got this uh, uh, channel trading situation. You've got um, you know, for example, you got this low here. You've got this. Uh, other low right here, okay. Uh, okay, uh, by the way, my stochastics is set at 14.33, O'Neill. Uh, but you can really use anything that you uh, you find appropriate. Okay, so we got this low here. We got this uh, second uh, low here. We got this high here. We got the second high here. We connect them. And then what happens? So we got this uh, backdrop. Now what do we do? We're looking for one of three warnings, okay? And if there are more than one, uh, more than, you know, one warning, then all the better. So you're looking for as many warnings as possible. Okay. So within that same uh, backdrop here, we've got this hammer candle. And this is, again, this is a really good hammer candle. We've got this move to the downside. We've got this small, uh, you know, this little body here. And then we've got this, uh, this uh, long lower wick. Okay. That talks about rejection right near the lows, right near, uh, this is not the lows, but right near support, okay, on this, uh, on this range or this, uh, this channel. Okay. What do we also have? On the stochastics, we have a, uh, you know, this doesn't happen yet, but we have a move up, a cross up above over, um, over sold, okay? So that's another warning, okay? So first we have this hammer candle as a warning. Then we have this move up from oversold. That's another warning, okay? Now what do we do? We're looking for a trigger. We're not getting in yet. We're looking for a trigger. What is this trigger? Look, I've got this uh, downtrend line here, okay? I'm looking for a break to this downtrend line. What is this, what is this break telling me right here? Right here, what is this break telling me? It's telling me that, uh, the turn took place. We had this hammer candle. We had the turn up <coughs> on the uh, oscillator from overbought. Uh, I'm sorry, oversold. Okay, so we have two warnings there. Now, what is this breakout telling me? It's telling me that perhaps that turn did actually take place and perhaps momentum is in fact in the direction of this uh, trend. I mean, I'm sorry, in the direction of this, uh, of this trade, which is after this turn. So this breakout, breakouts are, what is a breakout, but it's telling you that perhaps there's momentum. Okay, so this breakout is telling me not only do I have all these signals for turns, 
And not only do I have a channel here, not only do I have support here, but I also have momentum. And this breakout is showing me momentum, so I would like to get in on this uh, breakout. This is my trigger right here. Okay, so that's uh, the, that's the process of the, the three um, the three things you're looking at: backdrop, warnings, and then trigger. Okay, let me show you another one. Okay, so we. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, this is uh, British pound against U.S. dollar. Uh, this is an hourly chart. So just to show you, it's on different you know different time frames. You might be able to use this on. Uh, we got this down. Down run here. Okay, this is a uh, this is an obvious down run. Okay, this uh, and then once we have this uh, type of uh, you know channel type of or down run or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know I, I if any of you heard me before, I, I like to stay away from semantics. Okay, but uh, you know I'm just looking for price action and looking for price action to give me clues. Okay, so whatever you want to call this, uh, you see the backdrop here. You move to the second. Uh, you move to the um, uh, to to check if there are any warnings of possible turn near here. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we got a nice little. Um, uh, this is a shooting star candle near, near the highs. This is near resistance. Okay, so a small lower body. Yeah, we have a little lower wick here, but most importantly, we have a long upper wick here that talks about resi uh, you know resistance, rejection, failure near the highs, uh, loss of momentum to the upside. What else do we have here? We have uh, divergence, lower lo lower high in price. I'm sorry. This is uh, this is actually hidden divergence, but we have uh, we have a, a lower high in price, a higher high in the oscillator. That's called hidden divergence. It talks about a continuation of the uh, of the uh, of the trend, and this is to the downside. So uh, you know, so we have this uh, candle here, and then what do we do? We look for a trigger. This trigger uh, being right here on a shorter time frame. This is probably better. This is not a great example here because this uh, trend line is not so good, but. Uh, let me go ahead and show you a better example here. Okay, uh, Menno asks, uh, how many warnings for a minimum? Uh, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I'm looking for uh, one of uh, one of three. So it would be the minimum would be one warning. Okay, and then I'm looking for a trigger. But you know, if you have more than one warning, much better. So uh, if you have two warnings or, or even three warnings, much better. And then uh, you know, at that point, you're looking for some type of trigger. The trigger being uh, a trend line break. Okay, so uh, we've got this uh, downtrend, uh, downtrending uh, type of range here uh, on the one-hour pound yen chart, uh, and then we're looking for some type of uh, uh, some type of a, a trigger. Okay, I'm sorry, some type of a warning. So we have that here in this. Uh, you know, we have sort of a, a shooting star candle here, uh, not a great one, but a shooting star candle nonetheless. Uh, and then we have right after the shooting star candle, and as I talked about, we have this uh, this other uh, engulfing. You know, uh, bullish. I'm sorry, bearish engulfing pattern right here, which means simply that this uh, this next candle engulfs or encompasses the last candle before that. Okay. So, and this occurs right uh, on a on a pretty good channel here. So uh, this turn looks like it might be taking place right here. Okay. And then we got to turn down on the um, on the oscillator as well. So that's two warnings right there. Uh, two candlestick patterns, two warnings. Now we're looking for a trigger. So uh, we have this trigger right here. We have this uh, pretty nice. Uh, uptrend uh, support line, intra range trend line. This is a counter trend trend line, and we have a break to the downside, and that's a possibility for getting into a short trade on this backdrop and after the warnings take place. And uh, you know, keep in mind that warnings can take place, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, pretty early. So uh, much earlier than uh, the possible, uh, you know, trigger can take place. Although, you know, it, it is uh, probably better if they're closer together. Okay. Now, we have this situation here on the Euro Dollar Daily. Uh, this is, uh, we have, okay, and a lot of you will probably uh, recognize this chart. Uh, this is a, a sideways con uh, consolidation, a sideways trading range. Um, what do we have here? We got uh, all-time high resistance. We got strong support down here. This can go either way. We could, uh, there's no bias here. It can trade to the upside or to the downside. Once we have this in place, what are we looking for? We're looking for uh, possibilities for uh, for warnings. Okay. So at this point, this is a very good warning. This is sort of a doji, uh, a doji shooting star here. We got an up run. We got a, a, a doji here, but also very long upper wick. And uh, after an up run, this is sort of a shooting star right at resistance. 
right at horizontal resistance here. But not only that, we also have a very strong um, uh, divergence here. Higher high in price. This is regular divergence. Higher high in price, lower high in the uh, in the um, stochastics. What does that talk about? Loss of upside momentum, possibility for a turn in the market. This is about as good um, as good a uh, you know, a signal as you can get or a, a warning or a confirmation as you get in terms of divergence, candlestick pattern, uh, resistance. Now, uh, what do we do then? We look for a trigger to get in. Okay? So we have this very nice uptrend line right here. After this all occurs, we look at this as an, uh, as a very good uptrend line here. Break to the downside. That's my trigger to get in on short trade. After the backdrop's in, after the warnings are in, in this case, this was an extremely, extremely good trade. Okay, uh, let me just show you another. Okay, uh, Dollar Canada, just to show you, this is a little bit crowded chart. Sideways uh, consolidation on the four hour, uh, you know, pretty well established uh, resistance here. We're looking for warnings. Uh, we got this move down. Uh, this is an example of just one warning, basically. You know, right at resistance, we have this, uh, you know, this is not a great um, uh, candlestick pattern here. Uh, we, we have a, you know, somewhat of a wick here, but not a great one. Uh, but, uh, here's one warning. This is a move down. Right at resistance, we got a move down, a cross down below overbought. We're looking for some type of a trigger. What happens? We have a very nice uptrend line here, a trigger to the downside, a breakdown, and it goes from there. Okay. Okay. Now let me, uh, let me move to my, uh, real charts and this, my, uh, okay. Now, just to quickly, you know, uh, let me see. I, I think I have about three or four minutes here. Let me just uh, quickly give you my uh, the lowdown on what I'm looking at in the market right now. Okay, so uh, I've been talking. Uh, well, first, the, the key things that that we're looking at here. Um, if you take a look at my chart here, uh, this is a, a dollar Swiss daily chart. We just hit a new all-time low on dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss has been acting extremely technically for quite some time. And, uh, you know, as we can see here, we have a very good uh, downtrend uh, right here with this downtrend uh, resistance line. We had, uh, you know, regular breaks to the downside. And then uh, once there's a break to the downside, new all-time lows. And then uh, we have uh, retracements back up to uh, prior support, break, breakdowns again, retracement back to, uh, back to uh, support, et cetera. Uh, you know, et cetera. So uh, we just made a new uh, breakdown, and what I'm looking at here is to target 80 on uh, dollar Swiss, and uh, it's just remarkable in terms of the technical um, behavior of dollar Swiss at this point. Very good downtrend, support and resistance holding extremely well, and uh, working at, you know, resistance becomes support, becomes resistance, et cetera. Breakdown again, looking for 80 and possibly 261.8%. Um, you know, extension, Fibonacci extension. We are in uncharted territory at this point. In uncharted territory, I'm looking for Fibonacci extensions to, uh, to tell me where price might, might be going. Okay. Um, uh, other key things that we're looking at on the charts here. Okay. Very, very good chart. This is an Aussie dollar daily chart. Uh, as we can see here, we had a double high here. Um, uh, we had a double, uh, I'm sorry, double top here, and then a triple test of this resistance. This resistance right at about uh, 107.70 to 107.90, uh, about 20 pip uh, zone that we see very strong resistance here. Now, once again, we've approached that resistance. Uh, are we going to break through on the third time? That's the question that I asked yesterday in my analysis. Um, you know, at this point, resistance seems to be holding right here. Uh, now, within... Uh, the longer term context, we see a longer term, uh, a very long term uptrend on, uh, Aussie dollar. Uh, Aussie has been showing lots of strength. I'm looking for a possibility for a break to the upside if that occurs on this third try. Um, you know, for now, it looks like, uh, resistance is holding. But if there's a break to the upside, I'm looking for 110 to the upside, which is just a retest of the all time high that was hit in, uh, in May of this, um, of this year. Okay. Now, uh, you know, before I get kicked off here, let me just uh, show you uh, gold, okay? And uh, this is, uh, you know, for those of you in the U.S., uh, you know, at this point you can't uh, trade spot uh, spot gold on an unleveraged basis. But um, you know, just remarkable things going on in gold, and, and you know, and how they how it uh, correlates to the currencies. But if you take a look here, all time high in gold. Um, now, one very important thing: I talk about confluence a lot, okay? 
Yes, Harley, you could absolutely uh, trade uh, uh, futures uh, for gold. But, you know, if you take a look at this uh, chart right here, this is an extremely good chart, very indicative of the type of trading that I do, okay? So I'm always looking for confluence. Now, if you look at this chart right here, and it, it may be a little unclear because I have to make my chart small, but we have this very long-term uptrend here in, in uh, gold, okay? Now, price action... And, uh, you know, and then we have this medium term, uh, uptrend here. Now, I was looking, uh, you know, a few weeks back, I was looking for, um, uh, you know, a substantial correction in gold before resuming the all, you know, the, the, uh, overall uptrend. So this uh, correction occurred on this breakdown below this trend line right here. Okay. Now this correction occurred, at first, uh, I'm looking at 1512 as key support. Okay. If it breaks down below 1512, that is a confirmation that it's breaking down below this, uh, in medium term, uptrend. So it does break down below 1512. Uh, and 1512 being a very good support resistance. But anyway, it breaks down below there. I'm targeting 1475 to the downside. Now, it breaks down below there. Uh, it, it uh, you know, sort of hovers. It uh, retraces back up to 1512 area. And then it comes back down. It just misses my target at 1475 by about uh, $2 or $2, $3. Okay. So it goes down now. But here's the important thing. On this retracement, we have a very, very strong confluence of support. As we can see here, okay, not only is 1475 strong resistance support area, okay, um, not only is it that, it's also the, I don't know if you can see here, it's a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement of this major run right here. So you got this major run right here, and you've got this 38.2% retracement. It, it occurs right here at around 1475, just a little bit higher than 1475, okay? Now, also, you have this 100-period simple moving average right here. This all comes together at this point right here to talk about a confluence. So, I mean, and not only that, I mean, you take a look down here on the stochastics, a move up from oversold. So, basically, I have four different uh, com confirming factors that perhaps this uh, bearish correction has, uh, has run its uh, course, okay? And perhaps there is a turn. There, there might be a turn at that point or around... that point because look 38.2 percent you got 40 uh, 40 1475 you got the 100 pairs simple moving average you got stochastics telling you this is all going to the upside uh that for me was an extremely strong sign that perhaps it will return to the upside and then what happens is we break out above 1512 once again okay break out above 1512 target 1550 as strong resistance break out above uh, 1550 Target 1575 as all-time high, prior all-time high. Now we're in, once again we are in uncharted territory. What am I looking for? You know, around 16. You know, at this point, uh, uncharted territory. Uh, I'm looking at the last major correction. Uh, you know, so uh, to the upside, we've got the 161.8 percent. You know, it's pretty close by at around 1606 or so. And then uh, you know we have further guidance up here. Uh, for that, but uh, really in uncharted territory, I'm looking for my Fibonacci to uh, possibly give me guidance as to uh, further targets. Okay, um, and then uh, I think I, I, I'm really run out of time here, but uh, you know, uh, Euro dollar, uh, we're still in an uptrend, uh, long-term uptrend, about a year-long uptrend. It broke down below this uh, triangle pattern that, I, that I've been talking about for quite some time. Uh, that tri on a breakdown below that triangle pattern, first target 140, okay? 140 was hit, second target, below 140, 137.50. 137.50 was not hit. Um, and uh, instead, it pops back up and right, and it, uh, it, you know, it uses this resistance at around 142.50. It goes back into the triangle a bit. I don't think this is, uh, this pop back up is sustainable. I'm looking for further downside on euro dollar and a possibility for a rebreak below 140 and then possible, uh, you know, further downside there. But right now, we're still in an uptrend, a uh, long-term uptrend. Uh, I am looking for further downside on euro, much as I am for the British pound against U.S. dollar. Uh, dollar yen, I've been talking about this for quite some time as well. Lots of consolidation. We saw a breakdown below this parallel uh, channel here. Uh, this was a good channel. Uh, this is a four-hour chart of dollar yen. We, we had a breakdown below this channel. Uh, my target on that breakdown below this channel was 79.50 because we had this prior low down here. Okay, it hit 79.50 and it sort of bounces around there. Uh, and then uh, below that, uh, a breakdown below that could possibly uh, go for, uh, you know, we have this 261.8% Fibonacci extension. It's just shy of that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, possibility of further downside, although I am wary of going short on dollar yen. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I went, I've gone through everything. Uh, I'm still, yes, uh, Rob, uh, are you still bullish on gold? Absolutely, on a long-term basis, I'm still bullish on gold. But once again, we're looking for another, uh, you know, correction. Uh, you know, there should be another correction, uh, as there always is, but long-term, uh, still, uh, bullish basis, uh, silver still also bullish, although I was looking for more of a correction than actually occurred, uh, in silver. Okay. So, uh, you know, I would like to, uh, once again, um, thank everyone for our time today, uh, and for your time today. Now, uh, you know, once again, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at jchen at fxdd.com. That's jchen at fxdd.com, and I'd be more than happy to help you with anything uh, that you may need. Uh, I look forward to the next uh, webinar on fxstreet.com, and if you uh, have any, uh, if you would like to see my uh, some of my regular webinars uh, on, a di on a weekly basis, you could uh, feel free to come to fxdd.com and take a look at that. I would like to thank everyone for your time today, and uh, have a great day.